With the release of Rise, a whole set of monsters have been added to the Monster Hunter franchise that we haven't been able to hunt before. One of these is Gosharag, a fanged beast found in the Frost Islands. Standing tall and with its distinctive mask-like face and ability to create its own weapon, Gosharag certainly makes for a striking new addition alongside the more familiar monsters from previous games. Like many of the new additions introduced in Rise, Gosharag is inspired by various creatures, or yokai, from Japanese folklore. With its fearsome appearance and title as the Snow Oni Beast, the natural assumption would be that it's, well, based on an oni, a fearsome demon-like creature of great strength and size that's not too unlike an ogre in western folklore. However, in terms of design and inspiration, the Gosharag actually comes from a less well-known yokai, the Namahage. The game's director said as much in an interview, but more elements of this particular yokai shine through in the design of Gosharag, so I hope you will join me as we look into both the monster and the folklore and try to find where legend becomes reality with the Gosharag. The legend of the Namahage comes from Akita in the north of Honshu, the largest island in Japan. This area is historically remote and experiences heavy snowfall every winter, and every year on New Year's Eve a group of blue and redskin demons wearing straw capes and branching knives would come down from the mountains to terrify the villagers, bang on doors and going from house to house calling for naughty children, lazy people and new brides lax in their house duties. These people would be threatened or stolen away with Namahage back to the mountains, the demons leaving with a promise to return the next year to collect the very same types of people. Of course, in reality, the Namahage is a somewhat extravagant way to scare children into being well behaved, a bogeyman just waiting to punish you and a good reason to be a responsible member of the family. To this day, there's a yearly festival in ogre and surrounding villages in which young men dress up as the Namahage and go from house to house acting just as the yokai in the stories do. Upon being let into the house they chase children around to scare them, although nowadays after doing their job they are given food and sake and give their blessing upon the house before moving on to the next. The festival's quite the attraction nowadays and it's even a source of quite a few statues and decorations in the city of Oga. Uh, source of tourism now. Namahage have also appeared in other video games, alongside being the inspiration for Gosharag, Akami and Neo to name just two. So, what is it that differentiates a Namahage from a normal Oni, and how can we see this in Gosharag? Well, both Oni and Namahage are demon-like monsters that can have skin shades of blue and red, much like Gosharag and the differences between its normal and enraged mode. The most important difference is both in the folklore and in-game lie in their garments, weapons, and behaviour. In their most widely recognised form, Oni almost invariably wear very little, a tiger skin loincloth being the most stereotypical article of clothing in art and media. Of course, between regions and with different variants of legends, some Oni wear fine silks or disguise themselves as monks or travellers, inevitably to be discovered by the hero of the tale and slain for whatever misdeed they're up to. Namahage, however, are universally depicted as wearing traditional straw capes, the sort once worn by the people of Akita to keep out the dense snows and colds of winter. If we look at Gosarag, the dense, shaggy fur on the upper half of its body, which is so at odds with the coloration of the rest of the creature, almost resembles the straw capes once worn by the people of Akita and by the Namahage. The weapon of the Namahage and Oni are also an important distinction between the two, one that's also reflected in the Gosharag, in fact. Oni are almost universally depicted as wielding one particular weapon, the Kanabo, a large club studded with iron spikes or studs. Such a fearsome weapon requires a great degree of physical strength and poise to wield for an extended time. While some were made of solid iron, many were hardwood with metal spikes and studs along the surface, and were used from the 14th century onwards as conflict in Japan increasingly escalated during the Sengoku period, with fearsome weapons against both man and horse. Indeed, the Oni is so attached to this weapon that there's a saying about them both which equates to, like giving a Kanabo to an Oni. In effect, to give something that is already very strong even more strength. 
By comparison, the Namahage wields a very different weapon, a knife. Specifically a Deva knife used to cut large fish and occasionally poultry. This may seem an odd choice until one remembers that Namahage started as a myth to keep the rowdy and naughty children under control. A mother could hardly brandish a canavo at her son or daughter to show them what the big, fearsome monster would use. Such weapons were banned for non-samurai to possess at the time. But a knife from her own kitchen? That's something every household would have, especially in a coastal region like Akita. And when the time came to dress up for the festival to terrorise the children once more on New Year's Eve, well, knives could be easily procured and supplied for those to take on the role of the fearsome demons. When we look at the Goss Rag, we can see that its weapon of choice is blade. Whilst quite a bit longer and larger than the Deva knives of the traditional Namahage, it is still a one-handed weapon. In fact, the Goss Rag can even dual wield these great blades of ice longer than a man. It might strike as an odd choice when the monster could simply create a large club or block of ice, which would be easier and require less time to form. In fact, in the Gosharag's intro cinematic, we can see that at first the ice used to create the blade builds up not unlike a club and then hones itself and extends to create the blade that the monster prefers. Any greatsword users who have been playing Monster Hunter Rise might recognise the shape of the Deva knife because it's almost exactly the same design as the Gosharag greatsword, albeit somewhat thicker in game, but it's another wonderful nod to the Namahage. Whilst in Legends the Namahage would come down from the mountains to threaten people with bodily harm or stealing them away, they were more of a warning rather than terrible beasts to be destroyed. Oni, on the other hand, are almost always terrible threats to those involved or entire regions. One of the three most evil yokai, a title reserved for monsters that threaten the existence of Japan, was the Oni Shuten Doji, who attacked the capital at the time and had to be put down by one of Japan's most famous heroes, Minamoto no Raiko. Frankly, I could do an entire video on the topic of Oni, but now is not the time. But with this in mind, it is fortunate that Goss Rag lives in the Frost Islands, because it seems closer to the typical Oni in terms of behaviour. Whilst it does not plan diabolical schemes to take over Kumura village, the Goss Rag does use its immense strength to hunt, prey and feast, and even has the title of the Limb Reaper for how it goes about doing so. It would have been nice to see some more of the legend transmitted in Gosrag's gameplay and behaviour, but I understand that in a game called Monster Hunter it would be difficult to have Gosrag scaring children and then harmlessly returning to the Frost Islands. However, two of Gosrag's materials do actually relate to the Namahage's story and legend. The Gosrag horn mentions that it's a lumpy blue horn, the Gosrag, for some reason they tend to scare children, and the Block of Ice Plus reads, Any blade or gauntlet made of this ice is sure to freeze children in terror. A nice little addition, I think. It would certainly be interesting to get more information from Capcom and the game on just how Gosharag behaves around others of its kind, or nearby human settlements, whether it be as an intimidating trickster like the Namahage, or a brutal force like the Oni. So, what do you guys think? Do you like Gosrag and its inspiration from the Namahage? If so, please do let me know. I'm planning to look into all of the new yokai inspired monsters and Rise and the rest of the series, so if you've enjoyed this video I hope that you'll join me another time. I guess this is where I'm supposed to say like, comment and subscribe, but even if you don't, thank you for making it this far into my ramble about two subjects I really love.